Public Foundation in Kazakhstan. Uh, let me briefly uh, introduce um, to you our main topic today. Uh, it is uh, Kazakhstan shutdown uh, 2022, uh, restrictions on digital rights uh, during and after uh, the January events. Um, this topic is actually uh, based uh, on the special report uh, that we uh, prepared uh, within our organization uh, with uh, cooperation and um, partnership um, with uh, the local Kazakhstani experts. Um, uh, now I, I will uh, present um, to you our, our, our today's speakers. Uh, the first will be Yuljan Kabyshev. Uh, he's uh, the head of um, Digital Paradigm uh, Public Foundation. Uh, next, I'm glad to present to you uh, the founder of uh, Eurasian uh, Digital Foundation, Ruslan Derbekov. And the, our third speaker is uh, joining us um, online today. Um, her name is uh, Diana Premova, and uh, she is uh, the director of um, the Legal Media Center in Kazakhstan. Uh, Yuljan uh, is going to uh, give us precise information about internet shutdown. Um, Ruslan can share uh, with us information about uh, privacy and um, personal data. And Diana can share her expertise uh, about um, access to information and the uh, freedom of expression uh, during the Kazakhstan uh, shutdown um, 2022. <clears throat> and uh, before um, I give the word uh, to our speakers, uh, let us please um, demonstrate one short video uh, that we prepared about uh, internet shutdown. Um, the video itself is in the Russian language, uh, but there, there will be an English subtitles. Shutdown – это полное или частичное ограничение доступа к интернету пользователям как на отдельной территории, так и во всей стране. В Казахстане отключение интернета было в период с 5 по 10 января 2022 года. Необходимость шатдауна государства в основном объясняют защитой граждан, национальной безопасностью, противодействием дезинформации. В Казахстане отключение интернета мотивировали тем, что террористические группировки используют средства связи для координации и планирования действий. По данным ТОП-10 VPN, во время январских событий произошел всплеск роста загрузок VPN в стране на 3405%, а также ущерб от отключения составил примерно 429 миллионов долларов. Согласно законодательству Казахстана, блокирование связи законно. Однако международные стандарты говорят о том, что полное отключение интернета в стране может являться нарушением прав человека. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this was our video. And uh, now I can uh, give uh, the word to our uh, first speaker, Iljan Kabyshev. Thank you very much, Vadim. So, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Iljan Kabyshev. I'm the director of Digital Paradigm Public Foundation. Um, and uh, we have created a special report about uh, shutdown in January uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, named uh, Kazakhstan Shutdown 2022, Digital Rights Restrictions During and After the January Events uh, in the frame of the Digital Rights and Freedom of Escape project. You can check the full report uh, on the website by scanning QR uh, code or by clicking this link. Uh, can you just next slide, please? Yeah, we... Uh, we have created a, a report, uh, and this report published on Russian, uh, English, and the Kazakh language uh, to everyone. And uh, I'd like to begin my speech uh, with the fact that the government of Kazakhstan uh, made the decision to enforce a total internet shutdown. Uh, the president of the Republic of Kazakhstan, uh, Kassim Jomar Tukayev, adopted a decree on the introduction uh, of a state of a state of emergency. It was, it was mentioned that blocking access to the internet in Kazakhstan is legal and is one of the main measures taken by the law about the state of emergency. Uh, next slide, please. As a matter of fact, um, the internet in Kazakhstan is centralized and most of the control over the Kaznet 
uh, it's in the hands of a few governmental organizations, uh, Kazakh Telecom, uh, Governmental Technical Support, and the uh, uh, Committee of National Security. On January 5th, especially in Almaty City, uh, the population was feeling an authority vacuum, and uh, along with the deficit of information, panic was emerging. The only exceptions were mobile calls and uh, exchange SMS uh, between abonnants. In the period of 7th to 9th uh, of January, the government gave access to the internet in a dozen forms. On January 8th, uh, governmental media and websites and uh, some uh, websites of banks uh, became accessible to citizens. And only on January 10th, the internet was fully unblocked, but the regime of uh, anti-risk operation was continued. It may be regarded as certain that uh, the internet shutdown in Kazakhstan affected human rights in digital age, uh, like a freedom of expression, uh, freedom of speech, access to information. And um, uh, for information that 94 online materials viewed as dissemination of knowledge of wrong information by the Ministry of Information and Social Development uh, were blocked in January. And more importantly, it affected the life, health, and security of people and their families. Uh, because without access to the uh, social websites, messengers, um, uh, a lot of people got disconnected from each other in our city and their own city. The shutdown also greatly influenced at least 700,000 people with disabilities. Communications methods available at the moment, namely phone calls and short text messages exchange, were not sufficient for the maintenance of normal life of certain categories of citizens with permanent disabilities, such as hearing, visual, and mobility impairment, as well as diabetes, uh, Miltus and others. And uh, our key recommendations to prevent the same relations of human rights, human rights related to the total internet shutdown in the future as, are as follows. Uh, first, the state should take into consideration resolutions uh, July 7th, 2021 and May 13th, 2022 of the UN Human Rights Council as well as other international standards in the field of human rights. The state is recommended to think our possibilities to maintain safety for protecting life and health of its population without internet shutdown and make relevant amendments into its legislation. Because otherwise, human rights on opinion and expression as well as rights to information and other online rights and freedoms might be disproportionately restricted, especially in crisis or under a state of emergency or quarantine, when the lack of or shortage or of important information could become uh, critical. And uh, right now, the internet is not a privilege, it's a necessity. Thank you very much, Ilzhan. It was very informative, Ruslan. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm Ruslan Derbekov. I am a founder of Eurasian Digital Foundation, and I have contributed um, to the special report on two major uh, subjects about the uh, first special uh, legal aspects of data protection uh, processing and um, illegal practice of inspecting and checking uh, the contents of mobile phones during uh, the state of emergency. Indeed, it's very important to, uh, uh, to share with you our findings uh, about privacy and the personal data violation uh, during the bloody January protest in Kazakhstan. And in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, legal aspect, aspects of processing data during uh, the state of emergency, firstly, it should be, it should be known that uh, the government collect and register ev evidentiary records uh, with the use of national 
video monitoring system. Uh, just for information, a national uh, video monitoring system is an informational uh, system consisting of a package of software uh, products and uh, hardware devices designed to collect, process, and state uh, video materials, photo and video materials, uh, to resolve matters of, uh, um, to, of ensuring um, national security. But there is a standpoint that uh, photo and video materials uh, collected by the system should not be considered uh, as personal biometric data because operator doesn't um, use them uh, for the purpose of personal identification. Uh, but law enforcement and uh, special intelligence agencies use these uh, photo and video materials, especially uh, for the identification on specific natural uh, person based on his uh, physiological or, and uh, biological features uh, deemed to be personal uh, biometrical da data. Thus, instead of emergency evidence fixation, as well as identification of potential, com uh, uh, potential crime com committers may be considered only within the framework of criminal process. Uh, national legislation prohibits um, using illegal actions which restrict uh, rights of citizens and disclosing data uh, which relate to the, uh, to the right um, to privacy. As a result of special report, it was uh, strongly recommended uh, to the government of Kazakhstan uh, to inspect the national, uh, the national video monitoring system for the presence of uh, the guarantees guarantees aimed at protecting the right uh, to the privacy. And also, I would like to inform you about uh, inspection of the mobile phones under the state of emergency. In January, um, in January Kazakhstan imposed a number of rest uh, temporary restrictive measures, uh, which allows checking uh, ID documents, uh, as well as inspecting personal uh, items and uh, personal transportations. And uh, we were strongly concerned uh, about the facts when citizens um, faced uh, personal search and inspection uh, of the content of their mobile phones uh, conducted by police officers. And uh, regardless of the right to check personal belongings, uh, police, uh, police bodies may not inspect uh, the contents of phones. Uh, as there, there can be uh, some uh, certain data that uh, refer to uh, personal privacy. And addition, in addition, personal correspondence, images, video clips can certain information, can contain information on uh, marital or commercial uh, secrecy. And summing up, uh, it should be also known that it's necessary to exclude uh, situations that pose a risk of arbitrary interference in private life under the state of emergency. Uh, and it was strongly recommended to delete all data collected during inspections immediately upon the end of uh, the state of emergency, that none of such data uh, can be misused. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Ruslan. Uh, can we now connect uh, Diana Kremov? She's uh, through Zoom. Yes. Uh, hi. I cannot uh, switch on my video because the uh, organizer stopped it. Is it okay? You, you, can you turn it off or can turn on? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, friends. Can. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you absolutely clear. Okay. Um, I'm happy to be with you now, unfortunately, not in real format. And now I am in, in the west of Kazakhstan, in the east of Kazakhstan, and here temperature here is minus 37. So, okay, Zoom is also good. Hope you, your conditions are better than mine. Thank my colleagues and the organizers for the interesting session and possibility to, to tell about what happened during January events in Kazakhstan with freedom of speech and access to information. As you know, events resulted um, in, in certain restrictions, including in respect of the freedom of online opinion and expression. 
Uh, many representatives of the civil society came under pressure by the limbs of law. Detainments, uh, mass scale summons to questioning in law for enforcement authorities, arrests of journalists and bloggers, administrative penalties for publishing posts, physical attacks, and blockage of information websites. All these reflect violations of the right to the freedom of opinion and expression. Um, also, I have to say that access to public information was quite difficult. However, uh, our government understood that keeping people in the information vacuum is not a, a good idea, as it could uh, produce more problems. So that's why uh, when internet was blocked throughout uh, the entire country, uh, citizens of Kazakhstan received actual information through TV channels, mostly governmental channels, of course, like Habar, Kazakhstan, and Atomikian business. And then the Committee to Protect Journalists advised the authorities of Kazakhstan to allow journalists uh, their free coverage of events in the country and ensure their security from officials and protesters. So in general, it may be concluded that the access to information um, under the state of emergency was restricted on various levels. Such restrictions were mainly focused on the information regarding uh, the grounds and office of the tragic events, as well as the number of those that. So our main recommendation for recommendations for our government work that the state must be liable for ensuring safety and security of journalists and must not prohibit journalists to cover national protests uh, by threatening their freedom. The state must contend against spreading fake, unreliable, or calling to violence information, but at the same time, it should be honor right to the freedom of opinion and expression as set for by the Syracuse principles. It's also important to bring the laws and practice of Kazakhstan uh, associated with the freedom of opinion and expression and also in the health of digital rights to the full compliance with the international commitments. And of course, we also recommend it to contrib contribute to the maximum disclosure of the information, especially if it's of a high public uh, concern. So I have, I hope that uh, I try to use my three minutes. That's why uh, thank you for attention and I will be glad to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Diana. Uh, we can now move to our questions and uh, answer section. Uh, we are a bit too short in our time, but uh, we will be really happy to answer any questions from you or from uh, Zoom. Uh, I see the hand, uh, Idris, can you connect? Uh, we still can't hear you. Um, so, um, let me read the question from Idris. Uh, how do you evaluate uh, the situation with uh, freedom of speech after the January events? Uh, is uh, there any improvements or decline? Um, I believe this question is suitable for Diana to answer. Uh, Diana, can you? Uh, sorry, yes. So uh, a question from uh, Idris, yes? Yes, yes. How do you evaluate the situation with freedom of speech after the January events? Um, okay, I, I can uh, try to answer. Um, I think that a situation uh, is getting better now because after January events, we have uh, many new uh, and new sources of information, for example, Telegram channels. But one side is good that we have many independent sources, but another side, 
the soldiers are not uh, mainly are not professional and they are not of uh, uh, good professional journalist level and that's why people often uh, get uh, fake news and non uh, non objective information and also the second question can I say it's a question to uh, Yeljan Kabushev? Yes, what measures what measures should be taken to prevent similar situation in the future when digital rights are being restricted everywhere? Question. Well, uh, I should I should I should say that uh, uh, I mentioned our recommendations. Uh, how to prevent the same violations of human rights uh, in Kazakhstan. Unfortunately, we have uh, some articles uh, in our legislation um, uh, about the procedures uh, to block websites and uh, to the whole internet. Uh, we need to change our legislation, uh, like about uh, um, a main measure, uh, measure to uh, shut down internet, and uh, I think uh, we need to change um, a law about on communications um, where uh, certificate of security since 2016 um, uh, is uh, introduced in uh, Kazakhstan. And uh, we had uh, three or two times uh, of um, a pilot project in the uh, capital of Kazakhstan, Astana, uh, when um, providers um was sharing uh, certificate uh, this certificate um with the uh, abonnents unfortunately this method um uh, i mean uh, a national uh, security certificate had has uh, a method like a man in the middle i mean all internal and external traffic uh is uh, under surveillance and uh, we should uh, change uh, our legislations in uh, these uh, laws uh, to uh, make uh, our freedom in, in the internet in Kazakhstan um, more, more free. I would like to add something. And in, um, in order to avoid um, the situation when the digital rights as a station of digital rights, uh, we are violations, uh, including privacy. I think it's very important to review national legislation uh, for ensuring that as a right of uh, the right to privacy is guaranteed by the government, um, especially under the state of emergency. And I think uh, the government uh, has to conduct um, uh, monitoring of uh, how procedures which uh, is already exist actually in, uh, in national legislation uh, and also for ensuring guarantees uh, how to protect uh, the right to privacy and how this right is implemented uh, in the national legislations. Uh, thank you, Ruslan. Uh, that's, uh, I see, the, can you? Uh, my question is, um, what do you think from your perspective, uh, what is the probability of such a shutdowns in the future in Kazakhstan? Well, um, if we uh, don't change our legis legislation, uh, of course, uh, maybe uh, we will have uh, internet shutdown in Kazakhstan. And uh, now, uh, a couple of days ago, or, or, or three or four days ago in Astana uh, was internet shutdown uh, because of meeting or something like that. And um, uh, in, uh, for now in Kazakhstan, it's, uh, we have a really bad practice because of our procedure, procedure uh, to block the internet because of uh, our uh, providers, how they're working, uh, they don't share, they don't, doesn't share information about uh, blocking their websites uh, or 
uh, blocking the whole internet. And uh, we have um, we have um, a low quality of working of Ministry of Information and Social Development because uh, we, for now, um, we have, um, I think, miscommunications uh, between uh, our ministry uh, who can block uh, the websites uh, and uh, uh, we, the administrators of websites, they do not communicate and this is a problem. And uh, we are working in the uh, uh, working party uh, about uh, uh, draft law uh, about mass media. And uh, we have sent uh, recommendations to prevent uh, uh, violations, uh, human rights, like freedom of expression uh, to make maybe a communicate uh, between Ministry of Information and um, uh, administrator for website. About shutdown, so, um, we need to change uh, two laws, uh, a state emergency and um, about the communications. I think it's, uh, it's uh, maybe will be a hard work, but um, maybe we can change it. And you know, it's kind of unfortunate uh, that it's, it's clear for us that uh, the government in future uh, can, can use um, internet shutdowns like uh, like a digital uh, tools, uh, if you like, uh, to, uh, of course, to uh, somehow control, uh, some repress, and of course, we violate our rights. In, so unfortunately, so there is a high level of probability. Uh, thank you very much. I think, I believe we have uh, one or so, one or two minutes more uh, for the question. It's probably not enough time to, to answer this question completely, but my question is, how how do you change laws of this nature in Kazakhstan? And now that you're making these recommendations through your report, um, what are the opportunities for realistically engaging government and like, how, how do you do it? Actually, we, um, we are constantly involved in the uh, low drafting process in Kazakhstan and, uh, and uh, it's uh, of course we are uh, uh, very not proud, but uh, but it's uh, we uh, we think that um, this opportunity to be involved in the low drafting process uh, from the civil society sector is a unique opportunity for us to recommend to the government um, these uh, mentioned recommendations, and you know uh, of course uh, not all recommendations. Uh, uh, can be implemented by 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 the law drafters, but uh, at least we have opportunity to say it in public. And uh, sometimes, from time to time, of course, they just uh, use uh, the only norms which has not um, imperative but declarative uh, character. So, but but sometimes, uh, for example, we have some uh, good uh, uh, examples when especially uh, when we were members of the working group uh, of data protection law draft law and um, so many positive uh, provision legal provisions uh, being included uh, to the to the law and this is just um, some little little success of our work but yeah it's yeah, we are struggling actually we are struggling to 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 be involved, to change, to recommend, but it, but we, it, it should be known that the government um, at least um, um, make some opportunity for civil society sector at least to say it in public, and then we have opportunity to send them our recommendations in this regard. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, I believe uh, we are really short in our time right now, and uh, we have to um, close our today's lightning talk. Uh, we, it was like a great pleasure for us to be at the IGF to um, to tell us about to tell you about um, more about Kazakhstan about Kazakhstan shutdown. It was a great great pleasure. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Bye bye.